Greetings from AVP Research Foundation. In pursuit to AVP Research Foundation's initiative uh, to bring about awareness of what kind of diseases Ayurveda can handle successfully, what kind of diet, lifestyle, and interventions can benefit people at large. Today, I'm going to talk to you about management of skin diseases through Ayurvedic diet, lifestyle, and therapies. We'll also discuss at large about what are the basic concepts of Ayurveda to understand diseases especially related to skin, what kind of diet and lifestyle can pose a threat to your skin health, and also what kind of cases we have treated with empirical evidence. I'm Dr. Soman, and I'm going to talk to you now about skin diseases, which is called as kushta in Ayurvedic terminology. We all know that skin is one of the largest organ of your body. And uh, in fact, it's host to a second largest colony of bacteria. So as we talk about gut microflora, the skin is the second largest gut microflora apart from the intestine. So skin health largely depends on also, what kind of care we take to keep it healthy and also hygienic. In Ayurveda, there are classification of kushtas. We can call it as Mahakushta and Shudra Kushta. So, kushtas are skin diseases that uh, are difficult to cure as well as skin diseases which are relatively easy to cure based on the chronicity, based on the kind of pathology it has behind. Skin diseases are caused by different causes. It can be your immune system, your digestion and metabolic situation, as well as what is your daily routine. So let's understand what Ayurveda has to talk about. What are the major diet and lifestyle causes of the skin diseases? So coming to dietary factor, what we call as Aharaja Nidana, first is important is what we eat, when we eat, and what we eat when and what are the different recipes we eat. Many a time we are in the age of this age of superfood, we make certain very new age combinations like different kinds of smoothies, different kinds of deserts, different kinds of uh, cocktails, which many a times falls into the realm of viruddha hara or incompatible food in uh, Ayurvedic uh, perspective. So today I'm going to first discuss with you as to what are those dietary causes which can cause kushta or skin diseases. First among them is newly harvested grains. It has been a traditional practice in India that uh, grains, whether the rice or any other grains like wheat, need to be kept for an year before they are consumed internally. So, in fact, it is also one of the cause of hypermetabolic syndrome and causes diabetic-like syndrome and obesity. So, this is one of the common cause for both metabolic disease as well as skin diseases. So, avoid eating freshly harvested rice or grains. Second thing is heavy digestible food. Common example is your pizza, burger, too much of mayonnaise, too much of 
sandwiches which are heavy to digest with a lot of cheese on it. So in Indian genotype, generally these kind of food are difficult to digest. So you should be very careful in eating these food if you are not genetically programmed to have this kind of diet. Then intake of sour food, amla rasa, citrus, fruit or vinegar or uh, fermented food, you have to be very careful. It has to be eaten in moderate quantities. And if you have a predisposition to any uh, family history of skin diseases or skin allergy, you have to be very careful in taking this fermented food or sour citrus fruit. Then is milk. Today, there are a lot of uh, misconceptions about uh, milk. But if you take a organic uh, A2 cow milk, it is relatively safe. But yes, unfortunately, today our whole dairy industry has a lot of uh, hybrid uh, breed of cows, which creates some kind of an allergy. So you have to be very clear, careful if you're not very sure about the source of uh, your cow milk. You should be careful in taking milk products at large and especially buffalo milk is not very good for the skin conditions. Milk products like uh, soft cheese and yogurt. Again, it's a good source of probiotic, but in case of skin diseases and skin allergy, we'll have to be very careful about taking, especially we have to avoid uh, soft cheese like feta cheese or mozzarella, and you have to avoid yogurt and rather instead of yogurt, if you have a skin condition, stick to buttermilk or uh, what we say is takram in uh, Sanskrit or buttermilk uh, in English. Fish is excellent source of omega-3. In fact, uh, at large, there is a lot of um, awareness about importance of omega-3 oil and uh, skin, skin health. But if you have a skin condition, please don't take omega-3 supplements uh, derived from sea source or fish, rather take from the plant sources. That would be a better uh, indulgence. And you need to be very careful uh, in taking fish, either freshwater fish or seafood in case of skin uh, condition or skin allergy. Many preparations have been very being popular in India now, like uh, Turkish uh, tradition of eating tahini. Um, okay, that's very good for a certain segment of um, uh, population, but uh, if you have a skin condition, you have to be a little careful in taking sesame products because there can be sometimes a group of uh, people allergic to the sesame products. Um, but at large, I don't want to say categorically sesame products are unhealthy, but for certain people who are sensitive should be careful in taking that. Horse gram and black gram. These are... Uh, in South of India, especially Urundu or Masha or Black Gram is very uh, commonly practiced as part of idli and dosa uh, preparation. Uh, these uh, types of plant uh, protein, like especially uh, the Black Gram, tends to create some kind of allergic reaction with the skin. But then uh, in South of India, because of the climatic condition and genetic uh, uh, phenotype, uh, people eat it as part of their regular routine. But uh, we may have to be a little careful in uh, not using the batter too longer to preserve in the fridge. Uh, the way out is to have the fresh batter every day. And if possible, add some fenugreek which uh, undo some of the ill effects of uh, uh, the black gram allergy or some kind of uh, predisposition which black gram can bring about in skin health. 
beans are again an excellent source of protein. If you see, there are a lot of protein stuff which tends to sometimes create allergic reaction like in Western uh, protein like hazelnut allergy is well known. Similarly, even uh, if you have a skin predisposition, you should be very careful with uh, what kind of beans you take and whether it creates some acidity symptoms in your body. So you need to be very clear with uh, the kind of beans you take during your food. Sweets and uh, sugarcane products. Uh, it's well established that there are skin conditions, especially certain subtypes of psoriasis, certain eczema, or some kind of uh, allergic uh, dermatitis. They are triggered by uh, sugarcane products. So, and especially uh, white sugar is uh, very uh, important to understand that they can be allergic to your system. And then you have to be careful if with the history of skin uh, sensitivity, you have to be uh, careful in eating these sweet prepared from the sugarcane products. There is a concept called as uh, Mithya Ahara in Ayurveda that you don't eat food when it has to be eaten, like seasonal eating. Like in uh, Indian uh, cuisine, you have certain recipes to be eaten in certain uh, seasons. Like, for example, you don't eat a lot of uh, curd products during a particular season, like early rainy season, because we are told that it may create a state of indigestion and this indigestion creates toxicity and all these endotoxins can create uh, issues with the skin. So you have to be very uh, categorical to understand your local uh, uh, dietetic regime and traditional recipes to be eaten in different uh, season. And one of the basic thing is eat seasonal and local. These days, we often are ruled by our tongue rather than the discipline of eating. Now, why I say that is because we <coughs> come across many uh, combinations of uh, cocktails we call sometimes smoothies, sometimes we call as milkshakes. Now, these recipes are not thoroughly uh, studied for ages or centuries to understand its uh, activity on human physiology. And many times we mix certain incompatible food which can create an allergic response in your body. For example, there are preparations uh, which is uh, meat, especially fish with milk, which is classically told in Ayurvedic books as incompatible. And if you indulge in such kind of incompatible cooking and uh, recipe uh, as such, it can create a, a reaction or uh, mixing uh, citrus fruits like strawberries or sometimes even uh, the citrus uh, fruits like pomegranate with milk. Sometimes uh, if the pomegranate is sour and you mix with the milk, these all creates an incompatible uh, combinations and then that can create a skin allergy. So it's very important that you should uh, make a proper combination. There are other classical examples where flaxseeds, these, these days flaxseeds are excellent uh, superfood. It's called a rich source of again, plant-based omega-3, but then, if you are making a smoothie with flax seeds and milk, it is again a uh, term in the viruddha combination, like means incompatible uh, combination. So you have to uh, give a thought into whenever you come across a new recipes, kindly evaluate it properly and see first of all, whether it is part of your traditional uh, diet. Second, is that recipe uh, compatible to your genes. So 
unless and until you are sure, please don't indulge in these kind of new age uh, recipes. Then Vishamashana, that means you are eating at irregular time. So discipline is a major uh, cornerstone of health. Uh, and eating on time regulates your circadian rhythm, especially the organ clock. The functioning of the different organs are regulated by when you eat in accordance with the uh, intensity of sunlight. So you need to plan your meal, your breakfast around eight, uh, lunch around 12, some snacks around three, and dinner by seven, because this discipline will be uh, a major impact on your skin health and prevention of skin health or even cure of skin health. Because we say, hitasi syat, mitasi syat, kal bhoji syat. So you have to eat on time. Then only you can experience the health or even if you are undergoing a therapy for any skin diseases, unless and until you don't eat on time and right things, you may not get optimum outcome. Taking, again, indulging in eating before your previous uh, meal is digested. That is called as ajirna adhyasana, we say. That means you are eating before your previous food is digested. And this creates a lot of hyperacidity syndrome, some kind of uh, indigestion and uh, irritable or inflammatory bowel disease, ultimately impacting your gut microflora. I would like to make you aware that your skin microflora or the skin health and bacterial flora in the skin also depends on what kind of bacteria you have in your intestine. It's called as gut and skin axis. As we have gut and brain axis, we have gut and skin axis. And we all are aware that even stress can cause a skin issue. How? Because this stress impacts your gut microflora. In gut microflora, there is a reaction and then ultimately skin microflora also reacts and we have certain stress-induced skin disorders these days. And uh, one of a unique uh, skin disorder which is coming in forefront into our new age uh, issues of lifestyle disorder is like in planets, which is stress induced many a times. Now, where lies the, uh, the whole therapy or whole approach to addressing these new age skin diseases is you need to create a harmony between your mind, gut, and your skin. I want to share with you that when in Ayurvedic text, skin is discussed, we talk about seven layers of the skin. And quite interesting to note that the basic principles of Ayurveda also talk about seven dhatus. And in one of the uh, expositions of Sushuta while defining what is skin? He talks about a simile of or a metaphor of that skin is produced as your external cover as how when you boil the milk and after boiling, whatever is topically on the top gets thickened. It is the skin. That means what it talks about metaphorically or symbolically is your health of skin uh, depends on the state of your metabolism. And when you talk about metabolism in Ayurveda, metabolism is not just digestive system. According to Ayurveda, your whole metabolic system is inherently connected to your immune system also. Because in Ayurveda, your metabolism of seven dhatus ultimately leads to formation of ojas. And ojas is called as vyadhi shamatva, the immune response of your body, both your innate immune response or sometimes also acquired immune response. The ojas plays a major role. With 
pandemic behind us now or in some way affecting our day-to-day -day life still. And we know that there are newer and newer skin allergies coming up into our population uh, during pandemic and post pandemic, even due to virus um, influence. It's very important that you have to impact your skin through your digestion and immunity. And in that, what you eat, what we are talking plays a major role in uh, both prevention and cure of skin related diseases. So next is what are the lifestyle uh, factors which can create uh, skin diseases? So the first interesting uh, exposition is about day sleeping. According to Ayurveda, day sleep is contraindicated in general, except if you are very old, like you are beyond 65, or you are young, you are a, a, a toddler, or in summer season. Only these three categories, uh, people are allowed to sleep during the day. And even if you are habituated to sleeping during the day, it should be a short nap and you should not lie down on the uh, bed and sleep, but on an armchair or a couch. So a prolonged day sleeping should be avoided to prevent skin diseases or if you have a skin disease, try to avoid doing so. We all know about power nap these days in our busy schedule, power nap has been becoming popular. But then uh, we have to exercise with caution and we have to see that we do not uh, have a longer nap during the day. And in fact, the same uh, cause has also been talked to in, uh, in context to uh, diabetes, uh, like what we call as Pramaya, uh, like syndrome in Ayurveda, where it also creates a, a diabetic-like syndrome. And there are a lot of interesting papers like how daytime napping can create insulin resistance, that it can make your predisposition to uh, diabetes uh, higher. So daytime sleeping exercise with uh, caution. Then you should not suppress natural urges. There are uh, 13 types of natural risks. Some of them like, say, uh, like urge for defecation, going to the stool, urge for urination, uh, going for the urine. All these urges or urge to uh, sneeze, urge to yawn, urge to sleep. These are natural urges which you should not stop. You may think, what is this when uh, today in our so-called uh, sophisticated corporate as well as uh, uh, civilized world, uh, it's very uh, difficult for us to you know, get out of a meeting when we feel like passing a uh, loo or, or, or we want to go to the toilet. But Ayurveda talks about that it's very important that we address this kind of urges otherwise it can also in due course of time lead to certain uh, causes which can create skin diseases or stress in your skin um, uh, immunity uh, if you don't uh, address this natural urges. Then excessive exposure to the sun rays. Of course, we all are aware about need of sunlight and uh, its relations with, with uh, vitamin D. In fact, uh, in India, it's uh, becoming very much evident that we all are suboptimally exposed to the sun. But again, at the same time, there is also a tendency for us to do sun bath in certain season and we overexpose our skin. So we have to be very clear about exposure, time of exposure to the sun. And if we expose, try to use certain uh, oils, especially uh, coconut oil or sesame oil or other local uh, oil, which are good for your skin and which are suited to your skin. 
So that you have to see. One of the major trend which has been now a part of our healthy living is sauna or going for uh, steam chamber, steam bath. If you have certain allergies, if you have certain skin condition, it is totally can contraindicated in Ayurveda. Use of sauna is not indicated in Ayurveda. So you have to exercise with constraint. We have been seeing many of our patients having skin condition when they go to sauna, especially uh, inflammatory dermatitis, psoriasis, and other conditions. We should not go for sauna. Then how do you manage your stress, grief, uh, expectations, worry, all these things. So this is already uh, documented in our Ayurvedic text that these are the factors which uh, impacts your skin health. And as I told you that Ayurveda had always approached skin health from a holistic perspective, not just that you come with a skin condition, we give you certain herbs, we give you certain oils topically and we take care of it. No. The therapy of skin through these methods of herbal preparation may only contribute to 30 to 50% of the effect, but more than half of the effect also comes from your whole approach to how you lead a better lifestyle, indulge in healthy diet, and also have a healthy lifestyle of how, what to eat, when to eat, when to sleep, how to delegate your daily work. Ati Vyayama. Again, when we talk about healthy lifestyle, we feel that to remain healthy, we should exercise as much as, much as possible. No. Exercising is a science. So you should moderate your exercise based on your physical strength and also physiological need. Sometimes when, and also when you exercise. So you have to uh, understand your limitations and there are certain seasons, like summer season, you should do moderate exercises and hotter seasons, moderate exercises. And if it's a, a more colder season, you can indulge in a little more uh, exercise, but you have to uh, properly uh, plan your exercise schedule. And especially when you are exercising, the best time of exercising is bef before your uh, seven o'clock in the morning or around the sun rise or before the sunset around 4.30 to 6.30 in the evening. These are the best time to exercise. Then Achar Rasayana. So even the conduct. So as we talk about health is not mere absence of physical disease, but is also social well-being. How you conduct yourself in the society? How do you treat others? How you are treated by the society? These all also behavioral um, factors impact your uh, skin health. Uh, for example, any social misconduct, antisocial activity, sin. There are uh, tenfold sins we say in Himsa, Asteyam, Anyatha Kamam, Paishunyam, Parushan Tihi, Sambhinna Lapam. These all like speaking ill of others, uh, trying to uh, confiscate others' properties, uh, hurting others orally. These all are offenses sometimes, maybe very uh, subtle, uh, you may feel, but it also has an impact on your skin health, overall autoimmune response of your body. So you should follow proper sadhvritta. So these are uh, certain very important, let's explain factors in terms of what can create a stress in your skin and create skin diseases. Because we always thought or always think that, of course, uh, diet can be a major factor, but not the thoughts. So thoughts and emotion do impact your skin. This is a major uh, message I want to give. 
So let us coming to what should be eaten for a good uh, skin health. Or if you are undergoing a, a therapy with us or anybody which is for your skin condition, what kind of food you should eat? Easily digestible food, the lagu annam, what we say, is like, uh, like a... Uh, Porridge, porridge with rice and uh, mudga or green gram or uh, vegetables like uh, gods, uh, ladies finger, uh, vegetables like uh, broccoli. All those things are good for your uh, digestion, lighter to digest. Uh, now, so it should be eaten at the right time. And then uh, thick the saga. We know bitter taste. Now, if you see bitter god, ash god, pointed god, cluster uh, beans, all these kottavaranga, what we say in Tamil, um, pirkingai, patolangai, pusnikai, surakai, these kind of uh, watery vegetables, which has a bitter uh, aftertaste or main taste is bitter, this kind of food is very good for your, or vegetables are very good for your skin health and purification of blood. So, uh, in fact, uh, as I told you, that skin is directly impacted by what you eat, and the first dhatu is rasa, and then second dhatu is rakta. So, if the rasa rakta, if the uh, the the essence of the food which is in, assimilated into your body is healthier. And then that produces a healthy blood with good nutrients and oxidation. It adds to the skin health. So bitter tasting uh, vegetables are good. Purana dhanya, old grains, cereals and grains, uh, preferably one year old cereals and grains. If you recollect uh, the uh, older uh, habit of older traditional habit of you know, <clears throat> storing the grains in a big uh, container where the earlier uh, previous year grains are on the bottom and then on the top, you just keep on adding every year. So automatically, this was a uh, practice that uh, you don't take freshly harvested grains. Then jangala mamsa, if you are a meat eater, uh, try to take a hunted meat or uh, meat which is not uh, farm grown, hunted, uh, like, you know, or not hunted, of course, in the, our new um, kind of, you can't hunt these days, but then uh, what uh, the idea is that wild meat, uh, not uh, farm meat, uh, meat as much as possible. But uh, yeah, I understand that in this uh, era, it's very difficult. So basically, uh, lamb, goat, um, organic uh, chicken, uh, which is country chicken, this kind of things can be taken. Then green gram is one of the best. Then uh, Purana Shali, that means red rice, uh, Navra rice, what we say in South uh, is very good for your uh, skin health. Barley, barley is one of the best also for purifying your blood, having a good uh, excretion of urine. So the toxins are eliminated from your system. So in indulgence in barley, uh, grain eating is very good. Uh, wheat is good for uh, skin health. Yes, we have a lot of discussion about gluten allergy and wheat. Now, you have to be very categorically clear that uh, the gluten allergy is only to specific uh, genetically modified wheat. So uh, wheat has been always a part of our, so if you are um, able to get uh, local varieties of wheat, which is locally grown and uh, produced, then uh, it does not have such a response to gluten. So they're, um, they are uh, biochemically more uh, safer. Then Taking of uh, amvala, that means amalaki or, or, or gooseberry is very good or, you know, trifala in general is good. Uh, neem, of course, but then again, you have to be very careful that uh, neem is a good uh, supplement only when you have exudative uh, skin condition, which has a lot of uh, 
uh, exudation, a lot of discharge of pus or water and all those things. That's a good. But again, please discuss with your uh, your doctor, your advisor, health advisor before taking it for long term. So neem is very important caveat in that. Uh, Trifla at the same time also a caveat that anybody and everybody can't take uh, Trifla even if it is uh, you know good for skin health. But yes, you have to discuss this in accordance with your uh, therapist who is uh, or or doctor who is uh, advising you. In south of India, Kerangali will come that acacia water. It's uh, in Kerala specifically, uh, it is used and uh, it's one of the very best practices that uh, uh, medicated water uh, or uh, water that is processed in coriander, coriander seed, uh, you can just take and boil it, it in water. That also is good for flushing out toxins from your uh, body. So these are very specific things which are very good for uh, as drink. Um, last but not the least, the importance of buttermilk. If you have a proper A2 cow milk with uh, that, you make a yogurt and then you make a buttermilk out of it. Uh, it's an excellent probiotic drink for both gut microflora as well as skin microflora. In, Many of these skin diseases, we also do a takradhara. That means we do shirodhara with the buttermilk. So this is a, a very uh, important thing uh, to understand. So coming to uh, some kind of uh, lifestyle or usage of certain specific oils uh, for your skin health. So obviously without uh, any doubt coconut oil is good for uh, skin health but yes uh, primarily for first head and in the body also uh, many times you can use it uh, provided uh, it's uh, <coughs> it suits your skin type then uh, karanja thailam pungemia pinnata there is a very uh, specific oil but you have to be very careful in terms of uh, seeing that if it suits your body uh, especially uh, eczema, exudative condition, it helps. Uh, taking bath every day, this is uh, is very important. In fact, many a times we, uh, in our modern day-to-day -day, uh, lifestyle, we take uh, evening bath, which is not very well um, kind of uh, a good practice according to Ayurveda. According to Dhinacharya, you should have your bath in the morning after your oil application and uh, after your massage or uh, after your uh, uh, exercises. So uh, we should be careful with that. So please take your bath early in the morning if, if possible. Uh, then uh, exposure to very cold uh, is not good, so you can apply a certain amount of uh, oil if you are in that area. Uh, and then uh, fumigation, yes. This is another important thing is, uh, it's uh, in, in older tradition, uh, we used to fumigate our house uh, with uh, advent of COVID also, uh, it was again resurgent practice where we uh, very popularly, uh, uh, propagated about uh, Sankhapushpi or uh, Clitoria ternata uh, roots being uh, used for fumigation to purify your air around you so that there are better uh, friendly host uh, microbiomes around us which can give you a good uh, skin health. Mukh Prakshalana is very important early in the morning when you wake up uh, after your brushing and after your gargling, you should uh, try to clean your face um, and then uh, perform your dinacharya or seasonal and uh, daily routine. So this is in general, I wanted to discuss first about as to what are the major dietary and lifestyle causes which are good for skin diseases, which are not uh, good for skin diseases and as we came to understand that one of the major uh, 
challenge is how do we eat right? How do we program our uh, lifestyle uh, and sleep on time, eat on time, and uh, delegate our stress better? So today, Again, I'm in the second part of our discussion, I'm going to show you certain uh, case studies, which, uh, which I have uh, dealt at our uh, AVP Research Foundation Speciality Clinic. And uh, uh, we have a whole team uh, along with us who has been uh, over past 15 years uh, working towards catering to different needs of uh, uh, suffering uh, humanity, we say. So, uh, so whatever uh, skin diseases uh, we have been properly uh, documented, um, and then we are uh, creating practice-based evidence. That means uh, Ayurveda is known to have have an effect on your skin health, uh, but. What are the situation or conditions which uh, come to our clinic? We have been uh, documenting for almost a decade. And what we have seen that uh, what first stands out is allergic skin diseases like urticaria, uh, which we say in Ayurveda is called shitapittam, um, or certain uh, allergic dermatitis where due to certain uh, diet, lifestyle, or another, another unexplained allergies, uh, people come to us with uh, inflammation in the skin. Psoriasis, whether plantar psoriasis or psoriasis of different parts, psoriasis of the different parts of the body. Uh, this is uh, also a big area where people come to us. And uh, uh, of course, uh, we believe in evidence-based practice or practice-based evidence. So we have been doing a great amount of work on psoriatic arthritis as well as psoriasis for almost now a decade. And we are, have evolved our protocol uh, that uh, what are the conditions and what we have seen is uh, especially plantar psoriasis or palmar psoriasis or psoriatic arthritis or psoriasis of early um, uh, incidents, like when people come earlier to our clinic within one year of the uh, occurrence, we have got very in, uh, interesting results and it uh, involves both. Uh, so specifically talking about psoriasis, it's a challenging situation. We don't claim a cure, but we have been managing it through our constant uh, uh, intervention with both, which includes in inpatient and outpatient therapy. And we have follow-up of people even managing these conditions for more than uh, 10 years or 12 years, having a, a, a fair control over their disease uh, condition. So I'm going to show you certain um, case studies today. And uh, in fact, uh, this is a kind of uh, situation where we had uh, treated uh, psoriatic, uh, psoriatic cases in a very young uh, woman. Uh, so we can see that there is inflamed uh, patches over uh, face, and uh, we can see that how the same woman having uh, similar kind of skin lesions in the, uh, the palm, and we can see how before and after treatment we can improve uh, the skin. But yes, it, uh, it needs constant effort from both perspective of follow-up and uh, in indulgence in uh, taking the diet, lifestyle adherence, and, adherence, and also taking this again, uh, acute dermatitis. So in this, you can see pustular rashes, pus forming. Uh, so again, uh, excellent. In fact, uh, we are also getting a lot of dermatitis because secondary to uh, circulatory issues in lower limb, especially uh, sometimes non-healing diabetic, uh, sorry, uh, foot ulcers because of varicosity or, or, or when the, there is a lot of accumulation of uh, unwanted uh, fluid in the uh, pedal part of your body, in the legs. They have a lot of secondary infection and then these are conditions also where we can 
uh, have a very um, good impact of Ayurvedic therapy. Vitiligo, yes, uh, it has been uh, a challenge. Uh, I would like to say that in Vitiligo, you have to be very uh, careful in uh, uh, stating the prognosis when uh, patients come to Ayurveda within first one and a half to two years. Uh, the reaction is, uh, the, the response is very fast, especially on those parts of the body, especially face, uh, upper limb. Uh, but yes, uh, there are certain areas like in your private parts and other things, the response would be slow. But then the, the, the thumb rule is, if you have a vitiligo, which is an autoimmune disease. Uh, so it is an immune response. So when we treat uh, vitiligo, we also treat for your liver uh, enzymes, your immune response, and give you good probiotic food, which can impact your immune system and melanocytic activity. According to Ayurveda, we call it Svitram, and the involvement of uh, doshas are basically kapha and uh, pitta, but uh, we give certain herbal combination, which is told in this uh, uh, context uh, and, and uh, some external oils, which helps. If you can see, uh, this is a response. Another area is that these days, there are a lot of uh, instances where people uh, go through certain uh, uh, bites, uh, like this is a case uh, we have documented after the post snake bite, he underwent proper uh, antivenom therapy, everything uh, acute situation managed, but still uh, as a post uh, recovery period, uh, the patient developed a strong allergic skin flare up uh, in the face, especially, and which we could uh, manage in due course of time with our Ayurvedic medicine. So this is another insight of integrative care where uh, such allergic, uh, like we are getting a lot of people with mosquito uh, bite uh, allergies or certain uh, tick bite allergies. Uh, so this kind of thing, which uh, we can see a, a lot. Another area is herpes. Uh, of course, uh, again, herpes is a very, a strong uh, reaction to a viral uh, uh, presence like uh, herpes zoster, but according to Ayurveda, we talk about uh, acute pitta and vata imbalance. And uh, we uh, very well managed um, both uh, skin herpes or external or any other part of the body. We have different kinds of uh, mucosal layer where this herpes uh, uh, is manifested that can be managed well. This is another case where you have SLE, you have butterfly rashes, but there's a skin involvement. So we can see that there are malar rashes as well as photosensitivity with our due course of our therapy, we can improve this response. So this is not a primarily a, a skin disease, but then if it is associated with, uh, of course, a, a pre-existing condition of autoimmunity. So what I'm trying to also show you that skin disease is not just a local issue of what is happening in the skin. It is connected to your gut. It is connected to your immunity at large. So you need to give a more holistic overview to your skin health. Um, and not that something which you apply as a cream uh, that will solve all your issues. No, uh, that's not. Another important thing which I want to <clears throat> today also highlight is that uh, of uh, so many cosmetics have come to our forefront with uh, with a host of different knowledge, different formulation. Uh, sometimes we just go after the trend without properly assessing uh, as to whether the kind of uh, cosmetic is going to suit our skin or not. So please exercise conscious uh, caution on that. Use uh, very cautiously the soap, what you uh, use for your body because it impacts your skin health and also the cosmetics, uh, what you use. Uh, it's one of the very important factor for today. We are seeing that 
uh, people <coughs> have, uh, especially women having different uh, allergic reactions to cosmetics and so. So be careful with that. This is another case of plantar psoriasis. Uh, what we have seen that amongst all kinds of psoriasis, plantar psoriasis and pharma psoriasis seems to have been a very good result from Ayurvedic therapy. And we see the same woman within, uh, you know, it's not that it improves in just two years after that, even at the follow-up after almost uh, uh, 12 years or 13 years of follow-up, we can see that whatever uh, is uh, achieved is maintained. So it's almost 12 hours far follow-up, we can see it is maintained. Uh, so uh, it, it is a proof that if you properly uh, address to your diet lifestyle, uh, you may not follow uh, drugs up to lifelong, but still it can be properly. So this patient is a very good example where a proper adherence to follow-up and diet and lifestyle can lead a long-term reversal of this. Another uh, stress-induced uh, or certain allergic response which we have is called as alopecia irata. Again, <clears throat> these are, so the therapies are very uh, limited in uh, uh, common uh, medicine or, or, or uh, biomedicine. Uh, Ayurveda can play a major role in this kind of autoimmune disorders, especially this uh, alopecia irata. And we can see that if you properly adhere to, again, the regime which we give, uh, which can be external therapy and then internal medicine and diet, we can reverse your alopecia situation. So you can uh, see this. Uh, like psoriasis, uh, palanta psoriasis, palma psoriasis is also a very uh, great uh, opportunity for uh, Ayurvedic uh, doctors where we can give a very uh, good uh, response. Uh, again, host of skin diseases, we are trying to see uh, again a kind of psoriasis. So what I would like to um, state here now is uh, that uh, through our uh, consistent and persistent uh, evidence-based approach to create evidence for our practice. We have been uh, documenting uh, clinical success um, at AVP Research Foundation. And uh, I would uh, request uh, people at large who are looking forward towards Ayurveda as one of the options for their skin health. Um, there is a lot of opportunity for you to uh, utilize from uh, Ayurveda science as a whole for uh, maintaining your skin health. But uh, the message is very important is uh, it is not just the medicine which will uh, cure you. It is not the uh, therapies or uh, oils which will just cure you. It is also uh, your attitude towards embracing change in your diet, lifestyle and overall psychological, spiritual, and social uh, well-being. So thank you. Thank you for uh, your patient hearing. And I welcome any one of you who have any uh, queries, any uh, suggestions you would like to have from our team at AVP Research Foundation for your health needs. We are there to support you for all your uh, issues and for your skin health. Thank you.